Hi, I'm Lauren Mooney, a Grand Circus alumnus and associate software engineer at Nexus Technologies. I wasn't always a software engineer, though. I initially graduated college with a bachelor's degree in biology. For three years, I worked both at a doctor's office and as a server, and then I finally decided to attend Grand Circus and change my life. I graduated from Grand Circus's 12-week front-end coding boot camp in September of 2019, and I started as an intern at my current company soon after, where I eventually became a full-time developer. Besides being a developer, I'm also content owner and a lead instructor for Grand Circus's Intro to Coding Workshops, which we often call ITCs. Grand Circus not only helped me change my life and pursue a career that seemed very far out of reach, but it's also a place that is near and dear to my heart. Being part of the ITC team allows me to give back to Grand Circus and to help potential future students on their journey into the tech field, which can be both extremely scary and intimidating. However, at Grand Circus, we believe that anyone can be a developer, and that's why we tailor our ITC workshop for individuals who have little to no coding experience. In our ITC, you will get the very tip of your big toe dipped into the world of coding by learning the basics of three different coding languages, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Each two-hour class consists of both lecture, where we will discuss terms and concepts, and code along, where students will gain some hands-on coding experience guided by an instructor. Let's take a quick walkthrough of the code along project and see what it looks like. So this is the project that we walk our students through during our ITC workshops. As you can see, it is not the prettiest by any means. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of personality to it. There's uh, some broken images here, but we are going to make it a lot prettier, a little more functional, and we're going to set up a coffee shop for our students. So we're going to go ahead and drag this over and open up our files, and we are actually going to start in our HTML file. In HTML high level, it puts content or information onto our web page for our users to see. So we're going to go to line 15, where we have the words Grand Figures Coffee, and we're going to add what we call an H1 tag around these words. And what an H1 tag does, it adds a header to our web page. We're going to make one more adjustment as well. We're going to jump down a couple of lines to lines 21 through 23, where we have what we call image tags. Um, so if we look at our three tags that we have, image on line 21, that is our working one. And we have this SRC, which stands for source, which is going to be the source of our image. And our source of our image does have something within it. Uh, we've got a cappuccino.jpg. So that's where it's pulling that image and pretty much plopping it onto our web page for us. Um, but our other two on lines 22 and 23, 22 is, is completely empty, and 23 doesn't look promising. It doesn't really look like a file name. So we're going to fix that real quick, and we're going to say that the source for line 22's image is latte.jpg. And then for line 23, we're just going to fix the file name from iced coffee to iced dash coffee and add JPG at the end of it. When I click Run now, look at that. You actually have some images, and you can see that Grand Circus Coffee is actually like a true header or title to the web page. We're going to now go to our next section, which is going to cover CSS which if you don't know stands for Cascading Style Sheets, so CSS controls basically the styling of a web page. We're going to add a couple of what we call CSS rules so we can change some styles. So we're going to add one for body, which basically, to make it simple, is the entire view of a web page. And we're going to just change a couple of different properties or characteristics about our body. One of those is going to be font family. We're going to set it to three different ones, Arial, Helvetica, and Sans Serif. Then we're also going to set one for background color. And background color is going to be represented by what we call a hexadecimal code. And then lastly, we're going to add something called margin, which is just, it kind of affects the spacing of things. And we are going to do a margin of 40, 10. I lied. We're going to do 10 pixels and 40 pixels. And then we're going to change one other thing. Uh, down here on lines 23 and 24, we are selecting what we call H1 and H2 tags in HTML. Um, these are both types of headers. And we are going to change the font color of these, and we're just going to change that to the color teal. Now when I click Save All and Run, you can see that our background becomes a little faint gray. We've got our Grand Circus Coffee is now a teal color for us. Our font style changed, and you can see we got a little bit more spacing on either side here. We're going to move on to our third and final section of the course, 
where we talk about JavaScript. And in JavaScript, it's a little more involved. There's a little bit more pieces to put together. Um, but just as a high-level explanation, uh, there are variables which act as like named containers. And so we're going to create two, one by the name of price and one by the name of drink. We also learn how to write a conditional statement, which basically allow our web page to make decisions for us based on a particular condition. So I already wrote part of it out here, but with conditional statements, you can actually give variables different values depending on what condition is happening. So in this case, if somebody were to choose iced coffee, our price at this time is going to be 3.79, and then our drink is going to be the name of iced coffee. And now I can actually click on one of these drinks. I'm going to click on latte. You can see the drink name is latte. We've got a price of 4.29. I can actually order, um, I'm going to order two, and go ahead and hit check out, and at that point we'll see our receipt. You'll see what our total was, our quantity, and our price. All right, so that pretty much sums up the Procode Long project that we walk our students through during our Intro to Coding workshop, which is pretty cool, right? I'm glad you guys think so. In Intro to Coding, we never expect you to leave the workshop as a coding expert. Rather, we aim to leave you feeling proud of what you accomplished with your very first coding project and eager to learn more. Whether growing your knowledge means enrolling in our two other introductory workshops, Intro to Front End and Intro to C Sharp, or one of our coding boot camps, you too can change your life in just a few short months. And ITC is only the first step on your journey to becoming a developer. Thank you so much.